Yeah, it's ready. You can start now with the opening prayer. Amen. Uh, let's pray. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for this time. Thank you for allowing us your gospel. Thank you for your mercy. And thank you for what you've been doing in these 27 lectures, Lord, that you've been opening our understanding so that we can see the glory of the gospel of Christ, which is the image of yourself. Thank you, Lord. Please allow us grace, mercy, and revelation, wisdom by your spirit so that we can be able to understand your gospel clearly, understand this Maranatha faith, what those world evangelization bring forward, which is the return of yourself through the clouds. So we put this time in your hands in the glorious and precious name of Jesus, whom is the Christ. We pray it. Amen. 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 Okay. So we're going to go to, uh, I'm going to start with a verse that is not in the lectures because this is the closing of the 27 lectures. It's, it's a, it's a, it's the conclusion of what is the purpose of our faith because if we just have a faith that is okay well jesus christ jesus yeah king priest the prophet defeated satan sin and separation from god and and we just kind of get stuck like that um again as we talked about many religions nowadays believe in jesus christ if you go to the mormons if you go to the jehovah witness if you go to catholics if you go to christians and you tell them jesus christ they go like yeah 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 jesus christ i know i know i know but in, in, in reality, uh, there is something that the Lord is coming to look for. We're going to look it up in Luke 18.8. We're going to go to the, the word of God in Luke 18.8. I know this is a verse that we've probably seen before. Pastor, Pastor Mike probably talked about this verse before or somebody else. But this is a, an extreme crucial verse to understand this lecture. And Luke 18.8 says, I tell you that... He will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. So this is a verse that is it's just critical. Because uh, when we understand that, that, that God is saying, when I return, am I going to find faith? It's, a, it's, it's something that should really get us, uh, uh, in a way, trembling because he is the champion and the fulfiller of the faith and he gave us a commission and he promised us uh, something he promised us his return he promised us that he was going to that he was going to come back and in this same verse it's saying nevertheless when the son of man cometh meaning when he returns shall he find faith on the earth so what faith that's the question if we understand that the christ is jesus and that jesus is the one that was waited for that was going to come that came and that is to come back again so understanding these three points because if i don't believe that he's coming back again and, and i'm not talking about in a religious way that is like oh yeah jesus is coming yeah yeah sure like, look, one day he's going to come or or maybe like we've talked about the previously maybe i have a faith that is um kind of like i want him to return because i just don't want to be on this earth anymore so understanding the faith that the Lord wanted us to have in order to want to be with him, loving with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. To give you an, an instance, every time I leave home, my children, uh, they're waiting for me to return. They're, they're, they're eagerly waiting for me to return because they love me, because they know me, and they know that I'm going to spend time with them, I'm going to play with them, we're going to go out to the park, or we're going to do this, or we're going to do that. And they're little children that uh, they believe every word that I said to them. If I say, well, I'm going to come back, and I'm going to be with you, and I'm going to take you to the park, my children are, uh, they're, they're, they believe me. They believe me and they want me to return. So if I tell them, oh, you got to do, you got to listen to your mom. You got to be obedient. You got to do your homework. You got to do this or you got to do that. Uh, and if I return and, I, and they don't do what I tell them to do, well, I'll be disappointed for once. And obviously it's not an analogy that we can compare me returning home to my children rather than the Lord Jesus returning to get us because that we're talking about the eternal life being with God eternally. So we got to understand that uh, when the Lord says that he was going to return, he gave us the covenant of his return, meaning he gave us this homework. He gave us this authority and he gave us the charge of fulfilling world evangelization. Now, we're going to see in point one says Christ told us that he would return our days. Let's confirm that this is what he said, that he was going to return, not only return, but that he was going to return in our days. We we'll see it through the Bible. Bible in Matthew ten twenty three says, "When you are persecuted in one place, flee to another. I tell you the truth, you will not finish going through the cities of Israel before the Son of Man comes." 
So this is, again, related to what we just read. We, we just got to kind of understand what does the Lord mean by Luke 18.8, because that's why we started with that verse. The Lord says, I tell you the truth. This is not going to come to pass like all of you evangelize and, and I will return to get you. I, even, even going to all of the cities through all of the cities, I will come back. And, and we see that in Luke 18, 8, the Lord's, the Lord's saying about what is the faith that he's hoping to see when he returns. It says it on the same verse, when I return, when I return. Because if I understand that the Christ that was going to come and came, but it's not to come again, and I love it with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength about his coming, not only on thinking about it and, and being like the foolish virgins that is like, yeah, well, we know that we know that uh, that, 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 that that the groom is coming and 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 they weren't being uh, they weren't being honestly and sincerely believing about the coming of the groom, but they were kind of like, well, you know, uh, maybe we'll obey, maybe we won't obey, maybe it will happen, maybe it will not happen. Towards the, the virgins that were understanding that, that the groom promised to come. In the same way, when we understand that the Lord returned through, he, he promised to return. He promised that he was going to come through the clouds. And he said, I tell you the truth. This will happen. When you do what I tell you to do, I will come back. Matthew 16, 28. Matthew 16, 28 says, I tell you the truth. Some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the son of man coming in his kingdom. So the same, same thing again, the Lord starting uh, in this verse is saying, I tell you the truth. We know that God is not a man to lie, that he doesn't change his mind. He gave us a covenant. He told us that he was going to return. But what has happened in the faith that people now have uh, now have a days, it is not congruent. It doesn't match the understanding that if the Christ is not the one that is to return, then my faith is not complete. My faith is lacking. My, my faith is missing something. Because again, if the Christ is not to return, then he is not the Christ. And I'm not talking only in a theological or knowledge level, because, because this is something that I can talk and speak about and be very fervent in the spirit and share with you guys about this faith. But it, it could it could almost sound emotional. It could almost sound like, well, he's just he's just uh, you know, Luis is just being too emotional or too radical. Because to hear this faith, that clearly, like as Pastor Mike was explaining yesterday, the early church understood that proclaiming the gospel of the Bible and fulfilling world evangelization was going to happen. Is that the Lord was going to return? So when we see this kind of faith nowadays, it sounds it sounds too radical. It sounds too extreme. It sounds like like fanatical because the 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 the, the Christians nowadays don't un, don't understand this. What the Lord says, I tell you the truth. Matthew 20, 24, 34 says, I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things had happened. What are all these things that have happened? Everything that we read in Matthew 24 that has already happen and is already been happening and about everything that Matthew 24 talks about. And he says, it says, we'll certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. And, and we see that the main key point, as we talked about over and over is Matthew 24, 14, which is when this gospel of the kingdom is preaching the whole war for a witness unto all nations, then the end will come in Matthew 24, 34. Again, the Lord, um, sorry. in Mark 9, 1 says, and he said to them, I tell you the truth. Some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the kingdom of God come with power. So he even told them that some of them, they didn't even have to die. Like if it was, it was, it was something that the Lord promised and the Lord says, you do this, you do what I tell you to do. You do what I have commanded you. You, you do what I gave you uh, the, the commission, the responsibility of fulfilling world evangelization, and I will return. So the Lord constantly in all these verses is saying, I tell you the truth, I tell you the truth, I tell you the truth, and I tell you the truth. And in Mark 13, 30 says, tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all of these things have happened. So it's, it's, it's very close to Matthew 24, 34. So what we have to notice here precisely and, and clearly is what the Lord said that he promised that he was going to do. What did he say? And he promised, he says, I tell you the truth. What truth? That he was going to return. 
that he was going to come back. When? When we would fulfill the work that he commissioned us, the responsibility that he gave us, the authority that he gave us charge of, which is to fulfill world evangelization so that we may be able to see him return. That is in point number one, which he goes again, once again, and when, when you look at it uh, from Luke 18, 8, the Lord's asking, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith on the earth? Now, talking in a lecture and giving a lecture will not, will not give us the faith. And this is hard to understand because um, like when you look at the way that uh, the gospel operates in us, what happens with us, as Pastor Mike shared yesterday, uh, the Holy Spirit is given to us when we're born of God, when we believe what? That Jesus is the Christ, the true, the true and perfect king, priest, and prophet. That defeated Satan, resolved sin, so that we could be with God. So now that birth in the Lord will, will, will give in us the necessity of sharing the life. We, we would have the life, and we want to share the life, and we want to start doing world evangelization. We want to start preaching the gospel according to the evangelism of the Bible. It is to say, according to the way that the Lord taught us how to evangelize with the gospel. There's no other way. You cannot, it's impossible to evangelize, truly evangelize, I'm saying, without the gospel of the Bible. It's impossible to be able to fulfill world evangelization without the gospel of the Bible. So the gospel of the Bible would give me life, and I have this necessity to share the life. And as I'm doing the evangelism of the Bible, and as I'm gaining life, as I'm full of the Spirit, as I've, I have the, the fruit of the Spirit that's coming out of me, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, meekness, all of the fruit of the Spirit. So I'm full. I'm like the, that, 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 uh, that virgin that is wise, that is full full of the spirit of God, that will bring me into a point of having a faith. So the gospel of the Bible produces the evangelism of the Bible in me, in me, in me, in me. And the evangelism in me produces a faith. What faith? To fulfill world evangelization. But why? Why am I going to have this faith? Because I want the Lord to return. And I want, I want him to see him return, not just at a theological level, because we got to understand that knowledge will not save me. The Lord is not returning to this earth looking for knowledge, looking how many of us graduated in theology, looking of, uh, in, in us how many knows every passage of, of, of the word of God. Or He is not looking for knowledge. He's looking for faith. But the faith cannot come without the gospel of the Bible. The gospel of the Bible will produce in me the faith of the evangelism of the Bible and the faith of the evangelism of the Bible will produce in me the, the fulfillment of world evangelization, because that is the Maranatha faith. We're going to see it in point number two, believing that he will return in our generation is the correct faith. So again, all of those verses that we've seen so far in the 26 lectures previously up to this point has to give us the this, this solidity, the, the standing on that rock, on that faith. What is the rock? Christ. Christ is the rock. And who's Christ? Jesus. Jesus is the Christ. So that giving me that rock, that understanding, that faith, that foundation, as Apostle Paul first, as he started, he started gaining the, the word of God says in, in Acts 9, says that he started gaining strength. Then you see in Acts 17 that it was his custom. And then in Acts 18 says that he did it all the time. This is all he did, preaching that Jesus was the Christ. Because he started with being born of God. Then after being born of God, he started doing the evangelism of the Bible. And after doing evangelism of the Bible, they gave him the, 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 the finish line of fulfilling world evangelization and seeing the return of the Lord. We're going to see it here in Acts 20, 24. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. If I only I may finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. You see, let's, let's pause there. He understood the task. He had a clear understanding of the task. What was the task? To make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them obey everything that he taught us because he will be with us until the end of time. He understood that. It was the great commission of reconciliation, reconciling people to God. How? With the gospel of the Bible. There's no other way to reconcile people back to God without the gospel of the Bible. It's impossible. It's literally impossible to reconcile people back to God sincerely and earnestly without the only answer that God has given to humanity. So he understood the task that he had. 
to, 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 which it was to proclaim the gospel and make disciples and to testify because also it needed to be testified. He says the task of testifying to the gospel of God's grace in Acts 19.21. After all of these had happened, Paul decided to go to Jerusalem, passing through Macedonia and Achaia. And I, and, and I have been there, he said, I must visit Rome also. It was like, why? Why would he want to? It sounded like suicidal. He knew, he, the Apostle Paul knew that going to Rome would mean that he most likely was going to be beheaded, that he was going to be uh, either crucified upside down or burnt at stake or beheaded or something like that was going to happen. But he understood that his life was worth nothing to him as long as he could finish the race, the good race and the good fight of, of pro proclaiming the gospel of the Bible and making disciples. That was the understanding because he believed the gospel of the Bible. He obeyed the gospel of the Bible and he looked forward to finishing the task that the Lord gave him so that he may see the Lord return. You see, this is a faith that God gave him. And it was producing him by being obedient to the covenant, to, to, to the covenant, which is the gospel of the Bible. Remember, the gospel of the Bible is not the gospel of the Bible if it's only about Jesus that was the coming king. That is not the gospel of the Bible. The gospel of the Bible is about the Jesus that was the Christ that was going to come, that came, and that is to come again. So there's three parts to the completion of the gospel, the complete gospel, true and perfect prophet, true and perfect high priest, true and perfect king. That's what he, when he returns, his, he will say in his thigh, he said that king of kings, a lord of lords. So Apostle Paul understood this. He had, a, he had a genuine and sincere faith, which he was looking forward to the day of the return of the Lord. That's why he was doing it. In 1 Corinthians 7, 20, 9 to 31 first corinthians 7 29 to 31 it says what i mean brothers is that the time is short you see how it's saying the time this is apostle paul is saying the time is short from now on those who have wives should live as if they had none those who mourn as if they did not those who are happy as if they were not those who buy something as if were not theirs to keep those who use the things of the world as if not engrossed in them, for this world, it, in its present, from its passing away. So he understood, what, what was the Apostle Paul saying? Well, don't buy anything, don't have a family, don't get married, don't do this, don't do that. It's like, no, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't saying that. He's saying, do those things. But if you do those things, that's not your priority. That's not what's most important. That's not the life. What's most important, what is your priority, what is the life, is that you may get to know him, the only one and true God, and Jesus Christ, who he has sent. And this is the will of the Father, that we may fulfill world evangelization, that the, the gospel may be testified, and that the image and the likeness of God gets multiplied through the earth. And when this happens, Apostle Paul understood the faith of seeing his heavenly Father return of seeing God coming to this earth to get him. We understand that he is also the son of man, understanding that he came as a man, God came as a man, but he is the image of God. He is the, is, is the way that we can see God is through Jesus. And we see that in James, in, in James 5, 7 to 8. James 5, 7 to 8. Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. So you see, not only Apostle Paul, but also the brother of the Lord, James, which is, he, he was also, uh, he was the brother of the Lord in the flesh. He's saying to the church, he was saying to the brothers and sisters, be patient. The Lord is coming. Don't, 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 don't fade away from the faith. Don't deviate from the faith because they were believing all these believers in the, uh, in the early church were believing in Jesus as the Christ. They were at one point making disciples with the gospel of the Bible. They were testifying the gospel of the Bible, but then people started getting frustrated. It was like, well, what happens? Like we thought that he was going to return. We see that the church in Thessalonica was going to the point that they didn't even want to work anymore. Cause they were like, well, if the Lord's coming, what is the point of anything? Let's just relax. Let's just enjoy life. And let's just wait for the Lord to return. But 
uh, the 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 early church as Apostle John and uh, uh, sorry Apostle Paul and Apostle James and now Apostle Peter and the second letter of Peter 3 8 13 says but do not forget this one thing dear friends this is Apostle Peter with the Lord a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day the Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness he is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish but everyone to come to repentance but the day of the Lord will come like a thief the heavens will disappear with a roar the elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything in it will will be will be laid bare since everything will be destroyed in this way what kind of people ought you to be you ought to live a holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speeding, speeding is coming. This is like, wow, this is, let's just pause there for a second. What do you mean speeding is coming? You're saying that you can speed up the return of the Lord? You see, this is interesting that the Bible says this because that there's a lot of debate. And when you go online and you see all these preachers, there's a huge debate, right? Is the Lord supposed to come before the tribulation? in the middle of the tribulation, after the tribulation, and they spend their whole time and energy talking about subjects that the Lord didn't send us to talk about. He sent us to talk about the gospel, to make disciples, to preach the gospel, to testify the gospel. And instead of our, the children of God using their time for the purpose of doing the will of God, they spend time in arguing and debating when is it supposed to be that God is supposed to return? When, when you see the early church faith, they understood that the Lord gave a covenant. They understood that the Lord says, I tell you the truth. 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 And I tell you the truth. I am coming back. You do what I tell you to do. And I will come back. And the apostles understood that. They believed it. That's why they were doing world evangelization. That's why they were making disciples. That's why they were testifying the gospel. Because they understood that the Lord was not a liar. That he was just not just a man. That he was God himself. And he says, when you guys do that, the covenant that I'm giving you is the covenant of my return. But you see, Luke 18, 8. Then the Lord says, when I return, will I find faith on the earth? Who truly, who truly, who do you know that truly has this faith? of fulfilling world evangelization in their days, like truly that they give their life like the early church, that they, they, they run through the nations and they proclaim the gospel of the Bible and then make disciples with the gospel of the Bible. And then they're fulfilling world evangelization. Who, 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 who really does that as the early church did? Not many people. Why? Because you cannot do world evangelization and hope like apostle Peter says, let's speed up. Let's, let's do world evangelization. Let's fulfill the covenant. Let's fulfill what the Lord told us to do. Let's do it. Let's make disciples and preach the gospel. Because people don't have truly this faith. Why people don't have this faith? Because you cannot have it if you don't believe the gospel of the Bible. You need to believe the gospel of the Bible. I need to believe this. I need, because Why? Because the Bible says it. Bible says that I need to believe that Jesus is the anointed one of God, that he is the Savior anointed true and perfect king, that he is the Savior anointed true and perfect high priest, that he's the Savior anointed true and perfect prophet that was going to come, that came, and that is to come again, that he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I am the Christ. I am the Christ. That's what he's saying. He's saying, I am the prophet. I am the priest. I am the king. He was saying, the Lord said, that's, that's what he, all he did. Well, we, before you guys arrived, some of you, Pastor Mike and I uh, were chatting about how the Lord just didn't stop working. He was just like, go, 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 go. He was like, obviously, he had quiet times where he spent time in, in his divinity, talking to the Father and, and doing God's, uh, God's will, doing the, the Father's will, but understanding that the Lord, all he taught us is the gospel. Who is he as the Christ? And then he gave us the commission. And the early church understood it. The early church understood it clearly. That's why they were hasting away. Other version says speeding away. They were running for world evangelization. They were eagerly waiting. And there's many, many other verses that I'm going to have to try to speed up. Uh, some verses that um, you might not be able to have a chance to um to look them up, but I'm going to read them really quick so that you see that the early church were eager. They were eager. They were eager. They were speeding in a way. They were, they were wanting the Lord to return. So it says, just to conclude, it says, 
that day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and elements will met to melt in heat but in keeping with this promise we're looking forward to a new heaven a new earth the home of righteousness so what were they looking for to have big mansions in heaven no no that's not that's not the point what were they looking for their new glorious and and and, and bodies that they were going to get yeah i mean all those things we're going to get but what was their heart really what was the, what was the what, why were they willing to get murder you think about it it's like why would you want to get burnt in a stake? Sounds a little radical. Sounds a little extremist. It sounds fanatical. Because they understood that everything was going to burn anyways, that we were going to die anyways, that no one has their life, no one bought their life, that we were here temporarily, that they had a mission and a commission and a covenant that they needed to fulfill to see the day of the Lord through the clouds. They were clear about this. There was no confusion about it. We're going to see it in point number three. World of evangelization will be fulfilled in our generation with our own hands. Oh, man, we're running late. Oh, it's because we started late, right? Point number three. World of evangelization will be fulfilled in our generation with our hands. Point number one of three says world of evangelization in our days is to believe and obey the covenants of the Lord's second coming. Why obey the covenant of the return of the Lord? Because he told us the truth. But it was conditioned. It was his promise of his return had a clause. It had a condition. Go and tell me what I told you to do, and I will return. So what, what does it mean that I just go and tell them people that Jesus loves them? Oh, Jesus loves you. Oh, Jesus is 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 gonna heal you. Jesus is gonna do this. Is that how we're gonna fulfill worth of intercession? No, no, because that is not the gospel. That is Jesus loves you, is not the gospel. Does Jesus love me? Absolutely, he loves me. That's why he came to this earth. But in order for, to, for me to understand that he loves me, I need to understand what he did and why he did it. Why is he the Christ? Because that is the gospel, and that's the only gospel of the kingdom. That is the gospel that will fulfill world evangelization in our generation. So in Mark 16, 16, 19 to 20, it says, after the Lord Jesus had spoken to them, he was taken up into heaven and, set, uh, and sat at the right hand of God. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed his word by the signs that accompanied it. So because they had this faith, the word God was working through them, making signs, miracles, wonders, the same thing the Lord did were happening through his church because the church had a clear understanding of what was the gospel of the Bible and what was the purpose of film world evangelization. And point number two says the faith is our conclusion, purpose, and direction. Acts 1.8. I'm going a little fast because I want to read some verses that confirm about this faith of the early church that are not in, this, in the lecture. The faith are conclusion, purpose, and direction. Acts 1.8. But you will receive power in the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So what was the, the Lord saying? That the power was given, which is the gospel, because remember the, the, the gospel is the power of God for salvation to the Jews and to the Gentiles. And thus the Holy Spirit was given to us for what purpose? So that we may, we may be able to bring the power of God for salvation to all nations, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth, Matthew 28, 18, 20. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and that surely I am with you to the very end of the age. So the, the age. So am I, am, I, am I doing this because, well, maybe this is the end of the age, and I got to be making disciples and preaching the gospel? It's like, I don't know if the end for me is going to be today. I don't know. I don't know when the Lord will take me. I don't know if it's going to be today or when he returns through the clouds. I'm hoping that I may be able to see him through the clouds, but he might say, that's it. Luis. Today was your last day here. You're coming. So what was I doing? Was I making disciples, preaching the gospel? Was I full of the Holy Spirit? Was I being wise? Did I, was I doing the will of the father? That's John 6, 39 and 40. Was I really uh, in the understanding of what was the gospel of the Bible and making disciples and testifying the gospel or why, or was I just being foolish? Was I just doing whatever I said that I wanted to do and living a life of idolatry? 
where, uh, you know, it's just about myself, about me having a good life, me, you know, enjoying my children, me do, getting a good job and making money and doing all these things, which there's nothing wrong with doing those things, but nothing compares. And please listen to what I'm going to say. Nothing compares, nothing compares to being able to do the will of God. To do the will of God will fill you with the spirit of God will give you a fire and a love that is indescribable. It's indescribable. I cannot describe it because it's something that faith cannot be explained. It cannot be explained. It's something that God gives you. It fills you of his spirit and he gives you the understanding. What, what is the truth? What is the way? What is the life? What does it mean that the gospel, the Bible is that Jesus is the Christ and you get this fire in the spirit that you're longing and that you're hoping to be able to fulfill the commission that he gave, gave you because you love him and you want to be with him eternally. You just want to see him the way he is. You want to see him through the clouds and you want to be with him eternally. You see, this is a faith that you cannot explain. So you cannot experience this faith unless you believe the gospel of the Bible and then you obey the gospel of the Bible and then, you, then God gives you this faith. What faith? The faith of his return. When I return, the Lord says, when, when I return, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith? You see? It doesn't say, will he find knowledge? Will he, will he find institutes of the Bible? Will he find theological uh, understanding? It doesn't say that. It does, is knowledge important? Yes, it's important. That's what we're here. We're here learning about the word of God. We're understanding. We're going deeper in the gospel. Faith comes by hearing, by hearing by the word of God. Of course, faith, uh, knowledge is important because the, the people of God perish because of the lack of knowledge. We need to understand the gospel of the Bible to be able to believe it. That's why Apostle Paul started first and he, he and he gains strength first he was gaining strength in the spirit because it's the spirit that gives you that 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 wanting to do what god told us to do so first he gained strength then it was his custom you know it was his custom every sabbath every every sabbath you know it was just going to the temples he was going to the synagogues he was going to the jews he was going to the gentiles he was going to rome he was going and then he was and then what happened it was all the time it's all he did did he look like a madman? Yes, of course he looked like a madman. That's why they killed him. To the world, he was just cuckoo. It was like, what's wrong with this guy? You know? Like, what happened to him? He lost his mind. Because he, he had a true understanding. of What was the meaning of finishing the race? Concluding the work that the Lord gave him. The commission that the Lord gave him. So in point number four. It says, how can we fulfill this covenant? Gospel of the Bible, John 5, 39 and John 20, uh, 31. I think that we've seen these verses over and over, especially the ones that are gathered here. Five, uh, John 5, 39, it says clearly that the gospel is that the Christ that was going to come, that came and that is to come again. Because it says, it says, you diligently study the scriptures. You think that by them you possess their life. These are the scriptures testified about me. And John 20, 31 says, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, son of God, and that by believing you may have life. So those two verses explain that it, the Old Testament, the Psalms, the law of Moses and the prophets were talking about the Christ that was going to come. And John 20, 31 says that the Christ was came that is Jesus. And that that's the reason of the Bible. That's the reason of the scriptures so that we may believe who Jesus is as the Christ. That's the purpose of those 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament, 27 in the New Testament. The Christ that was going to come, that came, and that is to come again. That is to coming. So I have to believe even, even, even stronger and, and more powerfully and, and deeper with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength that that Christ that came, that was going to come and that came, that now is to come again. Because that is the covenant of his return because he told us the truth. He told us the truth that he was going to return. And that is the purpose of the whole Bible. And so people want to diminish it because it's always oh, just too simple. It's too, you know, it's just, uh, it's like the, the people of Israel with the, when they were walking uh, in the Exodus, when they were walking and, and manna was coming, it's like manna again, manna again, manna again. It's like, oh, it's boring. What was this? Jesus the Christ again, Jesus the Christ again, Jesus, the... boring. Because they're, they get bored of Christ. They get bored of the gospel. They get bored of the life. 
And if we get bored of the life, if we get bored of the gospel, if we, if, we get, if we get bored of what God gave us a solution, then we will not have this faith of fulfilling world evangelization. Sorry if I, if, if, if I get emotional, like in the sense like, you know, I don't want, I don't want to try to get overly emotional. I want, I want to be able to explain this clearly and sincerely as the Bible says. Because it might sound like I'm just being emotional about this, but it's, it's your, your whole, when you understand the gospel of the Bible and you start doing world evangelization, wherever God puts you, in your home, with your neighbors, in your country, in your city, other nations, and you start going and you start doing this, just this life comes in you. That is your whole being vibrates with this desire and this longing to see the return of the Lord. And you don't get tired. You don't, you don't ever get tired of the true gospel of the Bible. So if it gets fulfilled with the evangelism of the Bible, Colossians 4.3 and Matthew 24.14. And then after this, I'm going to see if I have a few minutes to share another verses that confirm about this eager, eagerly uh, faith that the early church had. Colossians 4.3, and pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. You see, what was their prayer? Was it like, oh, God, give me, God, give me, God, give me, God, give me? Or was it praying so that the gospel get further? When he was in prison, it's like, what, why was he praying, God, God, please get me out of prison? This is horrible. I just like, I'm not eating well. I'm not happy. I don't see my family. Was he praying like that? Or was he praying for the gospel to go further? There he says it, Colossians 4, 3, this reading, and I pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ for which I am in chains. So he was in prison because of the gospel. And what was he praying about? That the gospel may go further. So you see that the, the prayers of the Christian today, Christian people today, they're so pathetic compared to the, 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 the faith that the early church had, Matthew 24, 14, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. That's when will happen. That's when the Lord will return. The Lord will return. When we understand that when this gospel is preached, the gospel of the Bible, that is the gospel of the kingdom. He goes, well, what is the gospel of the kingdom? Well, the gospel of the kingdom has a king. Who's the king? Jesus. Who is Jesus? He is the Christ. He's the true and perfect king, priest, and prophet. Defeated Satan, resolved sin so that we could be with God. And when, when this gospel is preached in the whole world for a witness unto all nations, then the end will come. Okay, so let's just, uh, I have five minutes left. I'm just going to go through a few verses, and I'm going to go fast. I ho hope you can write them down, uh, and then you can look them up after so you, you make sure that I'm... I'm reading the accurate verses. This is Revelation 22, 20, 21. He who testified to these things, surely I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus will be with you. Amen. Revelation 22, this says, who testifies these things? What does it say? Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. Second Peter 3, 12. Waiting for and hasting the coming of the day of the Lord. We already read, read that one, but it hasting away. Remember Second Peter 3, 12. James 5, 7. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits. We read already that one. Hebrews 9, 28. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to, to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. You see how it says, eagerly waiting for him eagerly that's what the bible says in hebrews 9 28 then hebrews 10 25 not neglecting uh 25 32 and 39 not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near but recall the former days when after you were enlightened you endure a hard struggle with suffering sometimes being publicly exposed to reproach and affliction and sometimes being partners with those who uh those who uh, so treated for you have compassion on those in prison and joy and you and you you joyfully accept the plundering of your property since you knew that you yourselves had a better possession and an abiding one therefore do not throw away your confidence which has a great reward for you have need of endurance so that when you have done the will 
of God, you will you may receive what is promised for yeah, a little while, and the coming one will come and will not delay. But my righteous one shall live by faith, and if he drinks back, and if he shrinks back, sorry, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith in the persevere their souls. Hebrews 11, 1 to 2. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of the things that not seen for by it, the elders obtain a good report. What elders are they talking about? In Hebrews 1, uh, in, in Hebrews 11, 1, it's talking about the, the whole Hebrews 11, it's talking about that faith that the people in the Old Testament have. They had that faith of seeing the Christ coming. They had that faith of seeing the Christ coming. Then, then we live in a time where Christ already came. And now what faith shall we have that the Christ will come again? Titus 2.13. While well, we look forward with hope to that wonderful day when the, glory, the, when the glory of great God and Savior Jesus Christ will be revealed. 2 Timothy 4.8. And now the price awaits the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on the day of his return. And the price is not just for me, but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing see who eagerly see how it says eagerly again how was their early church they were eager about it they were let's let's do this you guys let's fulfill world evangelization the lord told us the truth that he was going to come back first thessalonians 4 17 18 then god with them who we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. What words? That the Lord's coming. Philippians 4, 5. Let everyone see that you are considered in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. 1 Corinthians 1, 7, 8. Now you have every spiritual gift you need as you eagerly, again, eagerly wait for the return of the Lord. Jesus Christ, he will keep you strong to the end so that you will be free from all blame on the day when our Lord Jesus Christ returns. First Corinthians 16, 22. If anyone has not love for the Lord, let him be accursed. Come, Lord Jesus. Apostle Paul had a, such a strong, sincere faith that he went to the point to cursing people that preach a different gospel and to cursing people that didn't believe in the return of the Lord. Imagine. To imagine what it is to condemn somebody. To say, you're a curse. What is it like you're a curse? Like you're separated from God, man. You're going to hell. That was, he was cursing people. Who? The ones that preach a different gospel, that believe in a different Jesus, that receive a different spirit, that have a different, a different understanding of this faith that the Christ was supposed to come, that came, and now that he was to come again. So say, if anyone has no love for the Lord, let that person be a curse. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus, because his faith was so strong. It was so fervent. It was so severe. They wanted to see the return of the Lord in their days. And this was not an emotional faith. It was a real sincere faith that they had with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, because they understood the gospel of the Bible. They were doing evangelism of the Bible, and they wanted to see God return through the clouds. You see, it sounds too radical, right? It sounds like, hey, Louis, settle down, man. Like, what, what's going on? Let's chill out. Hey, the world's going to hell. What are we doing? Yeah, you know, like, yeah, well, nobody knows they are the hour. You know, yeah, yeah, we've heard Jesus is the Christ. Come on, man. We've given this only answer to bring to the world. Let's do it. Let's bring it. Let's bring the gospel. There's a wonderful promise of his return. And then on top of that, there's a wonderful promise of all these things that he will give us eternally. But what is the wonderful thing, the most important thing that we will get is to be with God, to be with him eternally. Just the way he is. We're going to be able to see God just the way he is. Who is God? Jesus. Jesus is God. Jesus, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will be able to see him just the way he is. Let's pray. Well, there are many other verses, but I already went over my time. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for this time. Father, please forgive me if I, uh, if I presented this in an emotional, in an emotional way. But you, that's, that's one of the reasons you gave us emotion, so that we could express our heart to you, Father, so that we could love you and, and enjoy being with you, Father, and, 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 and worship you in spirit and in truth, Father, and, and to truly see your gospel, Father. 
flourish and go further and go into all of the nations and and to be able to see the, your image and your likeness being multiplied on this earth. Please, Lord, allow us grace, mercy, and revelation. Allow us the spirit, the spirit of wisdom, spirit of revelation in your gospel, in your gospel, Lord, because we cannot fulfill the commission you gave us without your spirit, without the gospel. The revelation gives us your spirit, and your spirit is the one that gives us the faith, because that's, that's what your word says. Please, Lord, allow us this revelation, allow us this faith, allow us the, your gospel, the Bible, so that we may be able to to fulfill the commission of reconciliation so that we may be able to see your return in our days. We love you, Lord. We give all glory and praise to you only. In the name of Jesus, who is the Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Amen. brother. Thanks, brother. Thanks, brother, for this wonderful sharing. I have a... Uh, uh, a quick we we've been laughing me and and pastor luis and and many of us have been laughing because on the posts for youtube uh it says uh my name is mice davies we thought maybe that was urdu for mike mike <laughs> yeah have you noticed in the in the posts for for when when you send me the the youtube videos it says pastor mice davies like a oh, mouse oh yeah maybe, pastor maybe. mice davies <laughs> so okay, people, okay, my, okay. my friend was... joey says he says maybe that's urdu <laughs> or mike <laughs> no no May, uh, maybe it's by mistaken and i will edit it no problem okay i just thought i'd point it out yeah so that's wonderful um so we're going to be uh i think for for the next few days pastor luis and i are going to be taking turns just uh, bringing a message it won't be out of the out of the out of the lecture book obviously because we've kind of finished those lectures so tomorrow morning uh, I'll bring I'll bring a, a preach a, a message and of course always it's the gospel this is all we preach um, it's not going to be about how to how to be a better you or how to have your best life now or anything like that yes. <laughs> You know, so we'll we'll do that tomorrow morning and uh, and the next day, and then we'll discuss maybe what we want to do on a on a regular basis going forward if we if we do feel the Lord wants us to do that. Okay. 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 You you can tell us. Okay. Yeah, we'll see you tomorrow morning then at nine o'clock for sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, at nine, uh, uh, you are uh, connecting, joining us from, by Zoom or? Yes, to tomorrow morning we'll continue with what we're okay. doing. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah. okay. Uh, it okay. Sounds, sounds good. Okay, God bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Maranatha. Maranatha. Masih Khudamad, may ab sab ki salamti ho. Ki bhi salamti ho. जी हमें जो है वो बहुत सारे लोगों ने ज्वाइन किया था लेकिन सारे मुझे लगता है कि उनका नेट इशू हो गया है तो आज हमारा जो लेक्चर है 27 लेक्चर्स खुदावन की शुक्रगुजारी है कि हमने 27 लेक्चर्स जो है वो कंप्लीट कर लिए हैं और मैं ईमान रखती हूं कि हमारे जितने सुनने वाले हैं और हम सब जो इस हमारे जो Zoom के हमारे पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैं मैं ईमान रखती हूं कि इस लेक्चर के जरिए इन तमाम लेक्चर्स के जरिए हमने बहुत कुछ सीखा है हम गहराई में गए हैं और सबसे बढ़कर यह कि हमें अपने जो है वो एवेंजेलाइजेशन की जो सिमत है जो डायरेक्शन है हमें उसका पता चला है कि हम हमें जो है किस सिमत को जाना है हमें किस डायरेक्शन की तरफ जाकर हमें जो मुनादी करनी है प्रीचिंग करनी है एवेंजेलाइजेशन करनी है तो आज का हमारा जो है के जो वर्ल्ड एवेंजेलाइजेशंस विल बी फुलफिल्ड इन आवर डेज तो जो दुनिया में अंजील की बशारत की जो है जो बशारत जो है जो मनादी है वो हमारे दिनों में जो है वो पूरी होनी है तो बाइबल हमें ये सिखाती है बाइबल हमें ये बताती है तो उसके लिए हम एक आयत पढ़ते हैं कि जैसे कि भाई ने सबसे पहले आयत पढ़ी थी लूका उसका 18 बाब उसकी 8 आयत में लिखा है कि मैं तुमसे सच कहता हूं कि वो जल्द उनका इंसाफ करेगा तो भी जब इब्न आदम आएगा तो क्या जमीन पर ईमान पाएगा अब सबसे बड़ी बात यह है कि आज अगर हम देखें तो हम यह देखते हैं कि क्या वाकई ईमान है 
حالانکہ ہم سب یہ دیکھتے ہیں کہ دوسری دوسری قومیں بھی خدا یوس مسیح کو جانتی ہیں دوسری قومیں بھی خدا یوس مسیح پر ایمان رکھتی ہیں انہیں بھی پتا ہے کہ کرسمس منایا جاتا ہے کرسمس کیوں منایا جاتا ہے کہ خدا یوس مسیح کی پیدائش کا دن ہے وہ بھی جانتے کہ ہو از جیزس کرائسٹ لیکن کیا وہ ایمان رکھتے ہیں اور اسی طرح سے ہمارے جو اپنی جو ہمارے اپنے اس میں دیکھیں تو بہت ساری ڈینومینیشن ہیں جو ہوا وٹنس ہیں اور اس کے علاوہ مطلب سالویشن آرمی والے ہیں اور بہت ساری ڈینومینیشن ہیں تو کیا ان کے اندر وہ ایمان جس طرح سے بائبل کے مطابق جو ہے وہ ایمان ہے یا ان میں سے بہت سارے لوگ یا بہت ساری کلیس ہے یا بہت سارے کلیس ہے کے جو لوگ ہیں کیا وہ ان کا ایمان جو ہے ان کی ایمان کی سمت جو ہے وہ درست ہے تو کیا خدا میں یوسم سی جو ہے واقعی اس بات کی وہ بات کرتے ہیں کہ جب میں آؤں گا تو کیا میں دنیا پر ایمان جو ہے وہ پاؤں گا تو اس لیے ہم یہ دیکھتے ہیں کہ خدا میں یوسم سی اس میں پہلا پوائنٹ یہ کہ خدا میں یوسم سی جو ہے نے بتایا کہ وہ ہمارے دنوں میں واپس آئے گا ہمارے دنوں میں واپس ہم اگر آپ بات یہ سوچیں کہ جب وہ ارلی چرچ تھا تو وہ بھی یہی بات کرتے تھے کہ خدا یوسم سی بہت جلد آنے والا ہے جیسے کہ بھائی نے بتایا کہ وہ بہت ہی جو ہے وہ جلدی جلدی میں جو ہے وینجلائزیشن یعنی کہ وہ اتنے پر عزم تھے اتنے مطلب وہ شدت کے ساتھ جو ہے وہ خدا کا کام کرتے تھے خدا ان کی بشارت کا کام کرتے تھے خدا ان کے آنے کے بارے میں لوگوں کو بتاتے تھے خوشخبری کے بارے میں بتاتے تھے اور جس طرح کے انہوں نے ہم سب جانتے ہیں کہ انہوں نے بہت سی مصیبتیں سہیں بہت سی اذیتیں سہیں پالوس رسول نے جو ہے وہ بہت دکھ اور تکلیفیں سہیں لیکن وہ پھر بھی اس کی کوشش تھی کہ آخری سانس تک جو ہے وہ اپنا کام جو ہے وہ کر کے جائے وہ انجیل کی بشارت کر کے جائے وہ منادی جو ہے اس کو کمپلیٹ کر کے جائے تاکہ جو ہے جب خدا یوسم سی آئے تو جو ہے میں میں سرخ رو ہو سکوں میں کامیاب ہو سکوں تو اس طرح سے یعنی کہ جو ہے جب وہ لوگ یہ کلام کرتے تھے تو آج جب ہم کلام پڑھتے ہیں تو ہمیں ایسا لگتا ہے کہ یہ کلام ہمارے لیے ہے یہ کلام ہمارے لیے لکھا گیا ہے کہ ہمارے ٹائم میں جو ہے وہ پورا ہونا ہے اسی لیے ہم کلام کو کہتے ہیں کہ خدا کا کلام جو ہے وہ زندہ کلام ہے کیونکہ وہ ہر ایک دور ہر ایک انسان اور ہر ایک شخص کے لیے جو ہے وہ کلام جو ہے ہوتا ہے اس لیے ہم اس کو زندہ کلام کہتے ہیں اور ہم یہ کہہ سکتے ہیں کہ ہمارے دنوں میں ہمارے کیونکہ جو ٹائم پیریڈ اگر ہم بائبل کے مطابق دیکھیں تو وہ ٹائم پیریڈ بھی جو ہے اب پورا ہونے والا ہے تو اس میں ہم یہ کہہ سکتے ہیں کہ ہمارے دنوں میں جو ہے خدا یوسم سی جو ہے وہ واپس آنے والے ہیں جیسے کہ انجیل اس کے دس باب اس کی تئی سائٹ میں لکھا ہے کہ لیکن جب تم تم کو ایک شہر میں ستائیں تو دوسرے میں بھاگ جاؤ کیونکہ میں تم سے سچ کہتا ہوں کہ تم اسرائیل کے سب شہروں میں نہ پھر چکو گے کہ ابن آدم آ جائے گا تو میرے عزیز ہم میں آج آج وہی حالات ہیں کہ انسان ہمیں جو ہے وہ دکھ دیتے ہیں ہمیں تکلیفیں دیتے ہیں ہمیں ستاتے ہیں لوگوں میں ہم یہ دیکھتے ہیں کہ بے دینی کا دور جو ہے وہ بڑھتا جا رہا ہے اور بے دینی کی جو قوتیں ہیں وہ جو ہے وہ غلبہ حاصل کرتی جا رہی ہیں وہ قوت پاتی جا رہی ہیں وہ ان کو جو ہے وہ اختیار ملتا جا رہا ہے تو ہم ہم مطلب ہم لوگوں کے لیے جو مسیحی لوگ ہیں ان کے لیے جو دنیا میں جو ہے وہ حیات جو ہے وہ تنگ کر دی جا دی جا رہی ہے تو ابھی بھی ہم دیکھتے ہیں کہ ایسے بہت سارے شہر ہیں دنیا کے ایسے بہت سارے ایریاز ہیں دنیا کے ایسے بہت سارے ملک ہیں اور اسرائیل خاص طور پر جو ابھی تک بھی خدا یوسم سی پر مکمل طور پر ایمان نہیں لائے آگے ہم یہ دیکھتے ہیں کہ متی کنجل سولہ باب اس کی اٹھائیس سات میں لکھا کہ میں تم سے سچ کہتا ہوں کہ جو یہاں کھڑے ہیں ان میں سے بعض ایسے ہیں کہ جب تک اپنے آدم کو اس کی بادشاہی میں آتے ہوئے نہ دیکھ لیں موت کا مزہ ہرگز نہ چکھیں گے تو ہم اس سب یہ کہہ سکتے ہیں کہ ہو سکتا ہے کہ مطلب ہم جب یہ پڑھتے ہیں تو اس کا مطلب ہے کہ یہ میرے لیے لکھا گیا ہے تو اس کا مطلب ہے کہ ہو سکتا ہے کہ میرے زندگی میں ہوتے ہوتے ہی خدا یوسم سی آ جائے اور یہ بھی ہو سکتا ہے کہ خدا یوسم سی مجھے اپنے آنے سے پہلے ہی بلا لے لیکن میرا جو کام ہے ہمیں یہ ایمان رکھنا ہے جو مین چیز ہے چاہے ہم اس وقت زندہ ہوں چاہے ہم زندہ نہ ہوں لیکن ہمارا جو کام ہے وہ یہ ہے کہ ہم انجیل کی بشارت جو ہے وہ آخری سانس تک کریں اور اس چیز پر ایمان رکھیں کہ خدا یوسم سی بہت جلد آنے والا ہے اور اس عہد کو مانیں اور اس عہد کا اقرار جو ہے نہ صرف ہم خود کریں بلکہ ہم دوسروں کو بھی اس کے بارے میں بتائیں کہ خدا یوسم سی بہت جلد آنے والا ہے اسی طرح سے مرکز اس کے تیرا باب اس کی تیس سائٹ میں لکھا ہے کہ میں تم سے سچ کہتا ہوں کہ جب تک یہ باتیں نہ ہو لیں یہ نسل ہرگز تمام نہ ہوگی اور 
خدا یسو مسیح کے بہت ساری ایسی باتیں بہت سارے ایسے جو خدا یسو مسیح نے متی کے انجیل اس کو چوبیس باب میں خدا یسو مسیح نے بتایا کہ دنیا میں ایسا ایسا کچھ ہوگا مصیبتیں آئیں گی کال پڑیں گی وبائیں ہوں گی لڑائیاں ہوں گی اور بہت زیادہ مطلب خوفناک حالات دنیا میں ہو جائیں گے کہ لیکن خدا یسو مسیح نے کہا کہ خوف زدہ نہ ہونا اور ان میں سے ہم سب دیکھتے ہیں کہ بہت کچھ ہو چکا ہے بہت کچھ ہو رہا ہے اور بہت کچھ ہونے والا ہے یعنی کہ ان میں سے کافی حد تک جو ہے وہ پورا ہو چکا ہے لیکن ابھی جو تھوڑا بہت جو رہ گیا ہم سب یہ جانتے ہیں کہ آخری جو ٹائم ہے وہ یہی ہے کیونکہ ہم جانتے ہیں کہ جو بے دینی کا دور جیسے کہ مکاشرا کہتا ہے کہ اس وقت بے دینی بہت زیادہ بڑھ جائے گی اور حیوان اور جو ہے وہ اینٹی کرائسٹ جو ہے وہ بہت جلد آنے والا ہے بہت جلد دنیا پر ظاہر ہونے والا ہے کیونکہ اس کی قوتیں جو ہیں وہ دنیا میں غلبہ حاصل کرتی جا رہی ہیں تو ہم جانتے ہیں کہ یہ اب وقت یہ جو پیشن گوئی ہے یہ اب پوری ہونے والی ہے باقی تقریباً سب کچھ پورا ہو چکا ہے اور یہ دوسرا پوائنٹ اس میں یہ کہ یہ ایمان رکھنا کہ خدا یوشم سے ہماری نسل میں واپس آئے گا تو کیا یہ ایمان رکھنا درست ہے تو ہاں واقعی یہ ایمان رکھنا درست ہے کیونکہ جب ہم یہ جانتے ہیں کہ وقت اور کلام کے مطابق جو ہے حالات کے مطابق جب ہم دیکھتے ہیں تو ہم یہ کہہ سکتے ہیں کہ واقعی یہ ہماری نسل میں ہی پورا ہونے والا ہے کیونکہ جیسے کہ مال بیس باب اس کی چوبیس آیت میں پالوس رسول جو ہم یہ دیکھتے ہیں کہ پالوس رسول نے کبھی بھی اپنی جان کو عزیز نہیں رکھا تھا وہ ہمیشہ جو ہے اس کو پتہ بھی ہوتا تھا اور پاکرو اس کو بتا بھی دیتا تھا کہ تم فلاں جگہ پہ جاؤ گے جیسے یروشلم میں جاؤ گے تو زنجیریں اور بیڑیاں تمہارا انتظار کر رہی ہیں روم میں اس کو پتہ تھا کہ میرے ساتھ کیا ہوگا روم میں کہ مجھے قتل کر دیا جائے گا مجھے مار دیا جائے گا لیکن وہ پھر بھی روم جانے پر بزد ہوتا ہے اور پھر بھی وہ روم جاتا ہے اور اپنا مقدمہ روم میں لے کر جاتا ہے وہاں پر جا کے وہ انجیل کی منادی کرتا ہے بشارت دیتا ہے تو اسی طرح سے وہ صرف بات یہ تھی کہ وہ اس بات کے لیے کہ میں جو ہے کسی طرح سے اپنا دور اور خدمت جو خدا یشو سے پائی ہے پوری کروں یعنی خدا کے فضل کی خوشخبری کی میں گواہی دے سکوں یعنی وہ جو ہے وہ اس بات کے لیے وہ تڑپتا تھا اس بات کے لیے اپنے دل میں وہ شدت سے جو ہے وہ رکھتا تھا وہ پیاس رکھتا تھا کہ میں خدا کی خوشخبری کی جو منادی ہے وہ میں کروں اس کو نہ بھوک کی فکر تھی نہ اس کو پیاس نہ اس کو زمانے نہ اس کو قتل نہ اس کو مار نہ اس کو صوبتیں نہ اس کو پرسیکیوشن اس کو کسی چیز کی پرواہ نہیں تھی وہ چاہتا تھا کہ بس میں جو میرا کام ہے میں اپنی آخری سانس تک وہ اپنا کام پورا کر سکوں اسی طرح سے ہم یہ دیکھتے ہیں کہ پہلا کرنتھی اس کے ساتھ باپ اس کے انتیس اور اکتیس آئے ہم پڑھیں گے پہلا کرنتھیوں پہلا کرنتھی اس کا ساتھ باپ اس کی انتیس سے اکتیس آیات امکت سام پڑھتے ہیں وہ کہتا ہے کہ مگر ہے بھائیو میں یہ کہتا ہوں کہ وقت تنگ ہے بس آگے کو چاہیے کہ بیوی والے ایسے ہوں کہ گویا ان کے بیویاں نہیں اور رونے والے ایسے ہوں گویا نہیں روتے اور خوشی کرنے والے ایسے ہوں گویا خوشی نہیں کرتے اور دنیوی کاروبار کرنے والے ایسے ہوں کہ دنیا ہی کے نہ ہو جائیں کیونکہ دنیا کی شکل بدلتی جاتی ہے یہاں پر وہ یہ بات کرتا ہے کہ ہمیں جو ہے اپنی ایش و عشرت میں جو ہے وہ کھو نہیں جانا ہمیں اپنے دنیا کے کاموں میں دنیا کے اس چیزوں میں ہمیں کھو نہیں جانا کیونکہ وقت جو ہے وہ بہت تنگ ہے وقت بہت کم ہے تو ہمیں کیا کرنا ہے کہ ہمیں ہر وقت جو ہے اس بات میں اس سوچ میں رہنا ہے کہ ہمیں خدا ان کے نام کی بشارت دینی ہے اور ہم اس خوشخبری کی منادی کرنی ہے اور یہ کہ ہمیں خدا یشم سی کے آنے کا جو ہے وہ انتظار کرنا ہے بڑی شدت کے ساتھ اور ایمان رکھنا ہے اسی طرح سے پالوس یعقوب کے خط میں پانچ باب اس کے ساتھ آٹھ سات اور آٹھ آئٹ میں یعقوب کے خط میں لکھا ہے کہ پس ہے بھائیو خداون کی آمن تک صبر کرو اور دیکھو کسان زمین کی قیمتی پیداوار کے انتظار میں پہلے اور پچھلے می کے برسنے تک صبر کرتا رہتا ہے اور آٹھ آئٹ میں کہتا ہے کہ تم بھی صبر کرو اپنے دلوں کو مضبوط رکھو کیونکہ خداون کی آمد قریب ہے تو جس طرح سے ایک کسان جو ہے وہ صبر کر کے اپنی فصل کا انتظار کرتا ہے ہمیں بھی جو ہے اپنی زم... اپنا بیج بو کر جو ہے صبر کر کے ہمیں اپنی فصل کا انتظار کرنا ہے کیونکہ خدا ان کی آمد قریب ہے اسی طرح سے دوسرا پترستین باب اس کی آٹھ سے تیرہ آیت ہم پڑھیں گے یہ کافی زیادہ آیات ہیں تو ہم بائبل میں سے پڑھتے ہیں اگر آپ اس کو پڑھنے میں میرے ساتھ رہنمائی کریں دوسرا پترس اس کا تین باب اس کی آٹھ سے تیرہ آیات اگر کوئی پڑھنا چاہتا ہے دوسرا 
باقی کلام میں لکھا ہے اے عزیزو یہ خاص بات تم پر پوشیدہ نہ رہے کہ خداون کے نزدیک ایک دن ہزار برس کے برابر ہے اور ہزار برس ایک دن کے برابر خداون اپنے وعدے میں دیر نہیں کرتا جیسی دیر بعض لوگ سمجھتے ہیں بلکہ تمہارے بارے میں تحمل کرتا ہے اس لیے کہ کسی کی ہلاکت نہیں چاہتا بلکہ یہ چاہتا ہے کہ سب کی توبہ تک نوبت پہنچے لیکن خداوند کا دن چور کی طرح آ جائے گا اس دن آسمان بڑے شور و گل کے ساتھ برباد ہو جائیں گے اور اجرام فل حرارت کی شدت سے پگھل جائیں گے اور زمین اور اس پر کے کام جل جائیں گے جب یہ سب چیزیں اس طرح پگھلنے والی ہیں تو تمہیں پاک چلن چال چلن اور دین داری میں کیسا کچھ ہونا چاہیے اور خدا کے اس دن کے آنے کا کیسا کچھ منتظر اور مشتاق ہونا رہنا چاہیے جس کے باعث آسمان آگ سے پگھل جائیں گے اور اجرام فلق حرارت کی شدت سے گل جائیں گے لیکن اس کے وعدے کے موافق ہم نئے آسمان اور نئی زمین کا انتظار کرتے ہیں جن میں راست بازی بس یہ ہے آمین یہاں پر پتر رسول یہ کہتا ہے کہ ہاں خداون کے نزدیک جو ہے ایک تین ہزار برس کے برابر اور ایک ایک ہزار برس جو ہے ایک دن کے برابر ہے تو ہمیں یہ یقین رکھنا چاہیے کہ اگر خدا صبر کرتا ہے تو اس لیے صبر کرتا ہے کہ ہر ایک کی توبہ تک نوبت پہنچے اور پھر یہ وہ بات کرتا ہے کہ جب خدا یسو سی آئے گا تو اس دن کے لیے یہ جو پرانے آسمان اور زمین اور یہ سب کچھ جو ہیں یہ سب اجرام فلکی وغیرہ سب پگھل جائیں گے سب ختم ہو جائیں گے تاکہ اس نئے آسمان اور نئے زمین میں ہم جو ہے راست بازی کے ساتھ جو ہے وہاں پر بس سکیں تو جب آسمان اور زمین جو ہے ان کی کوئی وقت نہیں ان کی کوئی ویلیو نہیں وہ بھی جو ہے وہ پگھل جائیں گے وہ بھی ٹل جائیں گے تو پھر ہم جو ہے ہمیں کیسا اپنی دین داری میں ہونا چاہیے کیسا ہمیں اپنے چال چلنے میں ہونا چاہیے اور کس طرح سے ہمیں جو ہے ایمان کے ساتھ جو ہے اور منتظر اور مشتاق رہنا چاہیے خدا یش مسیح کے بارے میں کہ ہر وقت ہر لمحہ ہمیں یہی یقین رکھنا چاہیے کہ خدا یش مسیح اب آنے والا ہے اب آنے والا ہے اور ہم سب یہ کہتے رہیں کہ اے دلہن جو ہے وہ کہتی رہے کہ اے یسو جلد آ اور اس کے بعد وہ کہتے ہیں کہ دنیا میں بشارت ہماری نسل میں ہمارے ہاتھوں میں مکمل ہوگی تو دنیا کی بشارت کا کام ہمارے ہاتھوں میں مکمل ہونا جو ہے اس کا مطلب یہ ہے کہ خداون کے ہم عہد کو مانتے ہیں ہم خداون کے آنے کا جو عہد ہے ہم اس پر ایمان رکھتے ہیں جب ہم یہ بات کرتے ہیں کہ خداون کی جو بشارت کا کام ہے ایونجلائزیشن کا جو کام ہے وہ ہمارے دنوں میں مکمل ہونا ہے تو اس کا مطلب ہے کہ ہم خداون کے آنے کے عہد کا اقرار کرتے ہیں اور اس کو اس پر ایمان لاتے ہیں جیسے کہ مرکز اس کا سولہ باب اس کے انیس سے بیس آئے میں لکھا کہ غرض خدا یشم سی ان سے کلام کرنے کے بعد آسمان پر اٹھایا گیا اور خدا کی دہنی طرف بیٹھ گیا پھر انہوں نے نکل کر ہر ایک جگہ منادی کی اور خدا ان کے ساتھ کام کرتا رہا اور کلام کو ان موضوع کے وسیلہ سے جو ساتھ ساتھ ہوتے تھے ثابت کرتا رہا آمین اب ہم سب یہ جانتے ہیں کہ جب ابتدائی کے لیے سے ہمیں جب وہ آتے تھے خدا مجیش مسیح کی خوشخبری دیتے تھے لوگوں کو سناتے تھے سب کچھ کرتے تھے تو خدا کی قدرت ان کے ساتھ کام کرتی تھی تاکہ ان کے وسیلہ سے مورزات ہوں تاکہ لوگ کام کر سکیں لوگ جو ہیں اس بات پر ایمان لا سکیں کہ واقعی خدا مجیش مسیح یا خدا کا روح خدا کی قدرت ان کے ساتھ ہے اور یہ خدا کے لوگ ہیں اور نمبر تیسرا پوائنٹ یہ ہے کہ یہ ایمان ہمارا جو ہے نتیجہ ہے اس بات کا کہ ہم خدا مجھ مسیح پر ایمان رکھتے ہیں اور یہی ہمارا مقصد ہے اور یہی ہماری سمت ہے یہی ہماری ڈائریکشن ہے یہی ہمارا پرپز ہے اور یہی ہمارا کنکلوژن ہے کہ ہمارا ایمان جو ہے وہ کیا ہے تو امال اس کی ایک باب اس کی آٹھ آیت میں کہتا ہے کہ لیکن جب روح القدس تم پر نازل ہوگا تو تم قوت پاؤ گے یورشلیم اور تمام یہودیہ اور ساملیا میں بلکہ زمین کی انتہا تک میرے گواہ ہوگے تو کیا مقصد تھا روح القدس کے آنے کا مقصد کیا تھا کہ ہم اس بات کی گواہی دیں کہ ہم دنیا کی انتہا تک نہ صرف یروشلم اور سامریا میں بلکہ دنیا کی انتہا تک خدا یشو مسیح کی گواہی دیں کہ خدا یشو مسیح ہی مسیحا ہے اور خدا یشو مسیح بہت جلد آنے والا ہے اور خدا یشو مسیح پر ایمان لانے سے ہی ہم سب جو ہیں وہ بچ سکتے ہیں اور وہی راہ حق اور زندگی ہے یعنی روح القدس جب ہمارے اندر آتا ہے تو اس کا اس کا مطلب کیا ہے 
کہ ہم اس بات کی منادی کریں ہم اس بات کی بشارت دیں ہم اس بات کی گواہی دیں اور اس بات کی گواہی دینے کے لیے ہم قوت کو حاصل کریں نہ کہ ہم دنیا کو اور رسم و رواج میں اور روایات میں اور طریقوں میں اور سوچوں میں خیالوں میں اتنا ہم الجھا دیں کہ ہم ان کے ذہنوں کو خراب کر دیں کہ جب ان کو کلام کی صحیح بات بھی ان کو سکھائی جائے تو وہ کبھی بھی اس طرح پلٹنا ہے بلکہ فضول آگے سے بحث کرتے رہیں مطلب بہت سارے لوگ ایسے ہیں کہ جو کلام کو غلط طریقے سے استعمال کرتے ہیں اور جبکہ کلام کی جو اثر ہوا ہے اس کو سمجھتے نہیں ہیں کہ روح القدس کا مطلب کیا تھا روح القدس آنے کا مطلب یہی تھا کہ ہمارے اندر قوت آئے ہم طاقت پائیں ہم دلیری پائیں ہم جرت پائیں جیسے کہ ہم سب یہ دیکھتے ہیں کہ پتر سسور جو ہے وہ بالکل مطلب اس کے سے پہلے وہ بڑا ہی جو ہے وہ ڈر پوک ہوتا ہے یعنی کہ اس میں دلیری نہیں ہوتی لیکن جو ہی خدا کا روح اس کے اندر آتا ہے وہ دلیری اور جرت کے ساتھ بولتا ہے اور خدا اس کو بولنے کا فضل بھی بخشتا ہے خدا اس کو لفظوں کی ترتیب بھی دیتا ہے خدا اس پر مکاشفات جو ہے وہ خدا اس کو دیتا ہے خدا اس کو جو ہے یہودی قوم کے سامنے دلیری سے بولنے کی جرت دیتا ہے خدا اس کو قوت دیتا ہے خدا اس کو قدرت دیتا ہے تاکہ وہ دلیری اور جرت کے ساتھ خدا شمسی کی گواہی دے سکے تو اسی طرح سے متیس اس کے اٹھائیس باب اس کی اٹھارہ سے بیس آیت میں ہم یہ دیکھتے ہیں کہ اس میں لکھا ہے کہ متیس اٹھائیس باب اس کی اٹھارہ سے بیس آیت میں جی سسٹر ماریا اگر آپ پڑھنا چاہتی ہیں تو آپ پڑھیں بتی کی انجیل اس کے اٹھائیس باب اس کو انیس سے اٹھارہ سے بیس آیات اٹھارہ سے بیس آیات یسو نے پاس آ کر ان سے باتیں کی اور کہا کہ آسمان اور زمین کا کل اختیار مجھے دیا گیا ہے پس تم جا کر سب قوموں کو شاگرد بناؤ اور ان کو باپ بیٹے باپ اور بیٹے اور روح القبس کے نام سے بپتسما دو اور ان کو یہ تعلیم دو کہ ان سب باتوں پر عمل کریں جن کا میں نے تم کو حکم دیا اور دیکھو میں دنیا کے آخر تک ہمیشہ تمہارے ساتھ ہوں آمین آمین اور اس میں ہم یہ دیکھتے ہیں کہ خدا مسیح کہتے ہیں کہ دنیا زمین اور آسمان کا کل اختیار میرے پاس ہے تو ہمیں کیا کرنا ہے کہ ہمیں جو ہے وہ قوموں کو شگرد بنانا ہے ان کو باپ اور بیٹے رول کچھ کے نام سے ان کو بپتسما دینا ہے اور ان کو یہ تعلیم دینا ہے اور کہ ان سب باتوں پر عمل کریں جن کا میں نے تم کو حکم دیا ہے اور دیکھو میں دنیا کے آخر تک ہمیشہ تمہارے ساتھ ہوں اور ہم اس عہد کو کس طرح سے پورا کر سکتے ہیں یہ آخری پوائنٹ ہم چوتھا پوائنٹ اس میں دیکھتے ہیں کہ بائبل کی خوشخبری جو ہے وہ کیا ہے تو بائبل کی خوشخبری یہ ہے یوہنا پانچ باب اس کے انتالیس آیت میں لکھا ہے کہ تم کتاب مقدس میں ڈھونڈتے ہو کیونکہ سمجھتے ہو کہ ہمیشہ کی زندگی تمہیں ملتی ہے اور یہ وہ ہے جو میری گواہی دیتی ہے پھر بھی تم زندگی پانے کے لیے میرے پاس آنا نہیں چاہتے خدا یوسف مسیح بائبل جو ہے وہ پوری خدا یوسف مسیح کے بارے میں گواہی دیتی ہے جبکہ ہم ہم زندگی کو پانا چاہتے ہیں ہم زندگی کو حاصل کرنا چاہتے ہیں لیکن ہم زندگی کو اپنے طریقوں سے حاصل کرنا چاہتے ہیں اپنی روایات کے ذریعے حاصل کرنا چاہتے ہیں اپنے جو ہم نے مذہبی جو ہم نے روایات بنا رکھی ہم اس طریقے سے زندگی کو حاصل کرنا چاہتے ہیں لیکن خدا میں یسو مسیح کو جو زندگی کا سچشما ہے اس کو ہم اپنے اندر آنے نہیں دیتے ہم اس پر ایمان نہیں لاتے ہم اس کی طرف پلٹنا نہیں چاہتے ہم نے اور ذریعے اور وسائل بنا رکھے ہیں اور جو ذریعے بنا رکھے ہیں خدا تک پہنچنے کے لیے لیکن جو خدا یوسم سی جو اصلی ذریعہ ہے جو راہ حق اور زندگی ہے ہم اس کی طرف آنا نہیں چاہتے تو بائبل کی خوشخبری کیا ہے بائبل کی خوشخبری یہ ہے کہ ہم خدا من یسو مسیح پر صرف ایمان لائیں صرف خدا من یسو مسیح ہی واحد باپ اور ہمارے درمیان وہی صرف ایک وسیلہ ہے وہی ایک درمیانی ہے کوئی اور نہیں ہے اور کسی اور کے پاس وہ اختیار نہیں ہے کہ جو ہمیں باپ کے پاس لے جا سکے اور کسی کی بھی اتنی مطلب جو ہے کوئی بھی ایس, کسی کو بھی اختیار نہیں دی گیا اور کسی کی بھی اتنی ضرورت نہیں ہے کہ خدا کے سامنے ہمارے لیے جو ہے وہ سفارش کر سکے کیونکہ خدا کی نظر میں سب انسان ہیں اور خدا جو ہے خدا کے بیٹے نے جو اپنی جان قربان کی خدا اپنے بیٹے کی قربانی سے مطمئن ہے اس لیے خدا نے بیٹے کو وہ رتبہ دیا کہ اس نے اس کو اپنے داہنی طرف بٹھایا ہے اور زمین اور آسمان کا کل اختیار اس کے اس کے ہاتھ میں دیا ہے جب اس کے ہاتھ میں دیا ہے تو پھر کسی اور کی ضرورت نہیں ہے ہمیں صرف جائے خدا میں یسو مسیح کے پاس آنا چاہیے تو ہم اس طرح سے خدا کے عہد کو پورا کرتے ہیں کہ ہم خدا میں یسو مسیح کی طرف پلٹیں اور خدا میں یسو مسیح کی صلیب کے نیچے آ کر اپنے گناہوں کا اقرار کریں اور اس کے اس خون کی جو قیمت اس نے ادا کی ہے اس کی ہم قدر کریں 
کہ اس نے ہماری خاطر اپنا خون بہایا ہے اسی طرح سے یونا بیس باب اکتیس آیت میں ہم یہ دیکھتے ہیں کہ یونا رسول جو ہے وہ کہتا ہے کہ کتاب مقدس میں بہت سارے معجزات لکھے گئے ہیں خدا یسو مسیح کے بارے میں جو خدا یسو مسیح نے زمین پر رہ کر کیے لیکن جو کچھ بھی لکھے گئے ہیں وہ یہ بات کہتا ہے کہ وہ اس لیے لکھے گئے ہیں کہ تم ایمان لاؤ کہ یسو ہی خدا کا بیٹا مسیح ہے اور ایمان لا کر اس کے نام سے زندگی پاؤ تو میرے عزیز و بائبل کلیئر بتاتی ہے کہ اگر کوئی شخص جو ہے خدا یسو مسیح کو مسیحا نہیں مانتا خدا یسو مسیح پر ایمان نہیں لاتا وہ کسی اور وسیلے سے کسی اور ذریعے سے زندگی کو پانے کی کوشش کرتا ہے اپنی دعائیں قبول کرانے کی کوشش کرتا ہے تو میرے عزیز و وہ غلط راہ پر ہے وہ اپنے آپ کو مسیحی نہ کہے وہ مسیحی نہیں ہے وہ کرسچن نہیں ہے کرسچن وہ ہے جو خدا یسو مسیح پر ایمان لاتا ہے اور خدا یسو مسیح کے نام سے زندگی کو پاتا ہے اور اسی سے کلسیوں اس کی چار باب اس کی تین آیت میں جو ہے وہ پلوس رسول یہ کہتا ہے کہ کلسیوں اس کے چار باب اس کی تین آیت میں لکھا ہے اور ساتھ ساتھ ہمارے اچھا بتانا اور ساتھ ساتھ ہمارے لیے بھی دعا کیا کرو کہ خدا ہم پر کلام کا دروازہ کھولے تاکہ میں مسیح کو اس بھید کو بیان کر سکوں جس کے سبب سے قید بھی ہوں ہم یہ دیکھتے ہیں کہ پلوس رسول جو ہے وہ اس بات کا اقرار کرتا ہے اس بات کا اظہار کرتا ہے کہ میرے لیے دعا کیا کرو کہ خدا پر کلام کا دروازہ خدا ہم پر کلام کا دروازہ کھولے یعنی وہ کہتا ہے کہ میرے لیے دعا کیا کرو تاکہ میں خدا کی خدمت کا کام جو ہے وہ کر سکوں تاکہ اس بھید کو میں بیان کر سکوں جس کے سبب سے میں قید میں ہوں وہ قید میں رہ کر بھی وہ اس بات کی فکر میں ہے کہ میں خدا کے کلام کی خدا کی خوشخبری کی جو ہے وہ منادی کر سکوں حالانکہ اگر وہ چاہتا تو کہتا کہ میں نے اپنا کام بہت کر لیا اب میں قید میں ہو چکا ہوں اب میں قید دی ہوں اب مجھے جب بہت جلد جو ہے وہ مجھے مار دیا جائے گا مجھے شہید کر دیا جائے گا تو میں نے اپنا کام بہت کر لیا ہے اب مجھے جو ہے وہ تھوڑی تھوڑی ریسٹ کر لینی چاہیے مجھے تھوڑا آرام کر لینا چاہیے میں نے بہت کچھ کر لیا ہے لیکن وہ پھر بھی آخری سانس تک کہتا ہے کہ نہیں مجھے جو ہے وہ بشارت کا کام جو ہے وہ کرنا ہے اور اسی طرح سے متی کے انجل اس کے چوبیس واپس کی چودہ آیت میں وہ کہتا ہے کہ اور بادشاہی کی خوشخبری کی منادی تمام دنیا میں ہوگی تاکہ سب قوموں کے لیے گواہی ہو تب خاتمہ ہوگا تو میرے زیزو ہم سب یہ جانتے ہیں کہ جب تک ساری قوموں کو جو ہے خوشخبری کی منادی نہ دی جائے تب تک خاتمہ نہیں ہوگا تو ہم اگر یہ دیکھیں کہ ہم ہم تو اپنے ان میں اپنی ہی باتوں میں الجھے ہوئے ہیں ہم تو ان چیزوں میں الجھے ہوئے ہیں تو غیر قوموں کو خوشخبری کون دے گا دوسرے لوگوں کو تک خوشخبری کون پہنچائے گا کیونکہ ہم تو ایک بڑے ہی ریلیکس مائنڈ کے ساتھ بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں اور ہم نے اپنی ایسی ایسی رسومات اور روایات بنا رکھی ہیں کہ ہم ان میں بڑے مطمئن ہیں ہم ان کو ادا کرتے ہیں اور کھاتے ہیں پیتے ہیں آرام سے سوتے ہیں تو غیر قوموں تک خوشخبری کون لے کر جائے گا غیر قوموں تک خوشخبری کون پہنچائے گا کیونکہ غیر قوموں تک خوشخبری پہنچانے کے لیے اپنے اپنے آرام سے باہر نکلنا پڑے گا اپنے آرام کے دائرے سے باہر آنا پڑے گا اپنے آپ کو اذیت دینی ہوگی اپنے آپ کو ادھر لے کے جانا ہوگا ان تک پہنچانا ہوگا مصیبتیں دکھ تکلیفیں سہنی ہوں گی تب کہیں جا کے جو ہے وہ غیر قوموں تک جو ہے وہ منادی جو ہے وہ ہوگی ورنہ اگر ہم اپنے اپنے جو ہم نے بنا رکھے ہیں ان میں ہم آرام سے ان کو ادا کریں گے ان کو پورا کریں گے کھائیں گے پیئیں گے ایش کریں گے اور پھر ہم سو جائیں گے تو بس منادی کون کرے گا منادی کس نے کرنی ہے اور کس بات کا حکم دیا گیا ہے تو آگے ہم مکاشو اس کے بائیس باب اس کی بیس آیت میں لکھا ہے کہ جو ان باتوں کی گواہی دیتا ہے وہ یہ کہتا ہے کہ بے شک میں جلد آنے والا ہوں آمین اے خدا من یسو جلد آ اے خدا من یسو آ تو ہم سب یہ کہتے ہیں کہ اے خدا من یسو خدا ہم آپ سب کو اس کلام کے وسیلے سے برکت دے آمین آمین اس میں وہ یہ ہے کہ یسو سے انہوں نے کہا تھا کہ کب آئے گا تو یسو کہے گا جب روح اور دلہن کے آ تو میں دلہن کو تیار ہو کے کہنا ہے کہ آ تو وہ آ جائے گا اب ہم سب نے ایک دوسرے سے میری ناتا کہنا ہے جتنے ہمارے پارٹیسپینٹ ہیں ہم سب نے سب سے پہلے یہ کہنا ہے کہ یسو آ کم جیزز کم کم جیزز کم کم جیزز کم کیونکہ اس نے کہا ہے 
कि दुल्हन अगर मुझे कहेगी रूह के साथ आ तो मैं आऊंगा तो दुल्हन को रूह के साथ कहना है कम चीजेस था हम खुदा के इस कलाम के शुक्र गुजारी के लिए भाई प्याज हमारे साथ हैं हम उनके साथ मिलकर दुआ करेंगे सॉरी सिस्टर आ गया था ये शोर कर रहे थे साथ बैठ के मैंने फिर बंद कर दिया आए हम दुआ करते हैं खुदा बाप खुदा बेटे खुदा रुलकुश मेरा दिल तेरे शुक्र से भरा है आज शाम खुदा हमने तेरा पाकलाम सुना हम उसकी शुक्र गुजारी करते हैं तेरे बंदों ने तेरे खादमों ने खुदा तेरा कलाम सुनाया हम उनके लिए बरकत की सेहत और तंदुरुस्ती की दुआ करते हैं देख खुदा जबकि हमने आज के कलाम से सीखा है कि तू दोबारा इस दुनिया पर आने वाला है तेरी बादशाही होगी और खुदा हमने ये सीखा है कि तू आया तूने हमारी खातर सलीब पर जान दी और फिर तू दोबारा से इस दुनिया में आने वाला है खुदा हमें तफीक दे हम इस बात की मनादिज है सब लोगों के आगे कर सके सब लोगों को बता सके जिस तरह हम सारी अंजीलों में ये सीखते हैं कि सारा अख्तियार जो है खुदा जस्सुम सी के पास है और उसने अपने शगिर्दों को जो कोई उसकी शगिर्दियत में आता है उसने हुक्म दिया है कि जाओ और कम को बाप बेटे रूल कुछ के नाम से वापस बंद हो मैं दुनिया के आखिर तक हर रोज हमेशा तुम्हारे साथ हूँ खुदांग हमें तैयार कर हम खुदा तेरी आमदे सानी के लिए अपने आप को खुदा तैयार कर सके लोगों को तैयार कर सके और खुदा और खुदा हवा में उड़कर तेरा इस्तेमाल कर सके देख खुदा तू जल्द आने वाला है पाकलम में बार बार ये हमें बताया जाता है ये दिखाया जाता है और तेरा पाकलो बताता है कि खुदा तू जल्द आने वाला है काशवा में खुदा तू बिल्कुल इस बात को बड़े वाजे तरीके से हम मेरे साथ बयान किया शेयर किया कि तू जल्द आने वाला है काश खुदा हम अपने आप को सानी के लिए तैयार कर ले देख रहा हूं आज हम जितने हमारे बहन भाई इस जूम मीटिंग पर हमारे साथ हैं उनके लिए बरकत की दुआ करते हैं और जितने लोग होली सिटी मिनिस्ट्री के चैनल पर इस कलाम को सुने खुदा जो आज कलाम की बातें बताई गई हैं खुदा वो बरकत पाए और अपने आप को खुदा मसीही ईमान में मजबूत करे और हम जबकि ऐसे दौर से गुजर रहे हैं जिसमें अजियतें हैं जिसमें प्रोसिक्यूशन है तंग किया जाता है ईमान के बिना पर खुदा तुम्हारे ईमान को और ज्यादा मजबूत कर हम तुझमें और बढ़ते चले जाए खुदा तू हमारे अंदर बढ़ और हम कम होते जाए चले जाए खुदा ईमान की मजबूती दे पाखरू पाखरू हम तेरे जलाल को देखें तेरे पाखरू को देखें जितने लोग इस जूम मीटिंग पर है जितने लोग इस जूम मीटिंग को खुदा चैनल पर देखे तुझमें बरकत पाए जलाल पाए तेरे पाखरू को देखें पाकरू हम तुझे अपनी जिंदगी में वेलकम करते हैं होली सिटी मिनिस्ट्री के लिए सिस्टर नसरीन के लिए सिस्टर नुसरत के लिए खदान जबकि जिन्होंने ये प्लेटफॉर्म मुहैया किया खदान बहुत ज्यादा बरकत दे इनकी हदों को जबीज की हदों की तरह बढ़ा और जितने खादम जितने पास्टर्स हमारे साथ इस आवाज को सुने इस कलाम को आज उन्होंने सुना है तेरे खादमों ने कलाम पेश किया खदान जब इस बात को सुने कि अपने आप को इस बात की खुशखबरी के लिए गवाही के लिए तैयार करें कि जीजस इस क्राइट यसु अल मसीह है जीसस क्राइस्ट और वो ही जो है दोबारा इस दुनिया पर आने वाला है दान हम किसी और का इंतजार न करें हम किसी दूसरी तलीम पर ध्यान न दे हम किसी दूसरे महबूदों पर तो न दे तो सब महबूदों से बढ़कर महबूद है खुदाउन तो बादशाहों का बादशाह है खुदाउन हम तेरे आगे झुके हैं हम अपनी फरियादे रिक्वेस्ट तेरे आगे रखते हैं देख खुदाउन हमारे जितने बहन भाई जो भी प्रॉब्लम जो भी इशू है जो भी दरखास्त उनके दिल में है तो दिलों और गुर्दों की जाने वाला खुदा है तुम्हारे दिलों से हमारी आवाज को सुन हम भाई सदीक के लिए प्रोबल के लिए मारिया के लिए इजरा इरफान के लिए भाई रशीद के लिए बरकत सेहत और तंदुरुस्ती की दुआ करते हैं जबकि सब तेरे खादम है तेरे नाम की मुनादी करते हैं तेरे लोगों की खिदमत करते हैं तेरे कलाम की खिदमत करते हैं खुदा तो हमेशा इन्हें काब की मानत असर नौ जवान करना उनको कुत देना दलेरी देना जैसा कि हम अमाल उसका पहला बाब आठ हाथ में पाते हैं जब रूल कुछ से हम कुत पाएंगे जब हमें रूल कुछ हमारे साथ होगा हम दलेरी पाएंगे हम किसी चीज से नहीं डरेंगे खौफ नहीं करेंगे देख रहा हूँ तूने हमारे लिए अंजील को भेजा तूने हमारे लिए खुशखबरी को भेजा तूने हमारे लिए गुड न्यूज भेजी 
हम तुझ में कुत पाते हैं तुझ पर हमारा भरोसा है पाकला में लिखा है मुबारक है वो इंसान जो खुदा पर भरोसा रखता है और मलाहून है वो शख्स जो इंसान पर भरोसा रखता है देखता हम तेरे आगे झुके हैं सारी हमारी बीमारियों का हमारे मिसाइल का तेरे पास हल है तू हमारा सेवियर है तू हमारा निजात दहिंदा है तू ने हमारा कफारा दिया है तू हमारा बादशाह है देखता हम तेरी बादशाह के मुंजर है पाकला में लिखा है पहले ढूंढो तुम उसकी बादशाही फिर सारी चीजें मिलती जाएंगी दान हम तेरी बादशाही को देखना चाहते हैं हम तेरी बादशाही को ढूंढना चाहते हैं तू हमारे साथ हो कलाम हमारे घरानों के साथ हो एक एक फर्द के साथ हो ये सुनासी तेरा कलाम पूरी दुनिया में फैले जहां तक अभी तक नहीं जा सका दूर इलाकों में कस्बों में देहातों में मुल्कों में गलियों में हर जगह तेरा कलाम फैले ये सुनासी हम तेरे कलाम की मनाती करने वाले बन गए हम तफीक दे के हम उठ खड़े हों हम गलियों में जाएं और कस्बों में जाएं दूसरे शहरों में जाएं ताकि तेरे कलाम की सच्चाई जो है दूसरे लोगों के सामने बयान कर सके तुम्हारे साथ हो बड़ी बरकत दे मानते हैं यस्सु के नाम से आमीन जी कल वो आ, हमारे साथ होंगे फर्स्ट माई कल साथ हमारे साथ होंगे तो यह है कि हम खुदा की शुक्रगुजारी करते हैं कि हमने सताइस लेक्चर कंप्लीट कर लिए हैं आप आगे थर्टी सेवन लेक्चर हैं मेरे ख्याल थर्टी सिक्स एंड थर्टी सेवन है तो आ, उनके लिए जो है वो बताएंगे कि कब तक वो जो है वो उसका वो शेड्यूल वगैरह बना के हमें स्केजल बना के हमें बता देंगे कि हम कब स्टार्ट करेंगे तो आप मेरे लिए खास हम दुआ करें कि इस चीज़ को दुआ में हम रखेंगे कि जो है आ, अबलीस जो है वो हमें जो है वो मतलब तंग करता है परेशान करता है माशी तौर पर और लिहाज से तो हम हम सबको इस चीज़ में दुआ करनी है कि खुदा हमें इतना मजबूत करें कि हम मतलब जो है वो दलेरी और जरूरत के साथ जो है उसकी मनादी जो है वो पूरे तरीके से हम कर सकें हम जो वेंजलाइजेशन का काम है हम सब जो है ताकि खुदा हमें मुहैया करे वो जो कसरत का खुदा है वो हमें मुहैया करने की जो है वो कुदरत रखता है तो हम सब जितने भी हमारे पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैं चाहे वो कोई भी हैं कहीं से भी उनका ताल्लुक है तो वो हमारी मिनिस्ट्री का हिस्सा हैं तो हम सब जो है वो मिलजुल कर जो है वो इन सारी जो चीजों का जो है वो जो इसके लिए हम खुद इसमें हिस्सा डालें और खुद हम इसके लिए सब तैयारी करें ना कि हम दूसरों की तरफ देखें जितनी हमसे कोशिश हो सके हम अपनी मतलब जो है वो जो है पूरी कोशिश करके हम इसमें जिस जिस चीज की जरूरत हो हम उसके लिए खुद से भी पूरा करने की कोशिश करें ठीक है तो जी अब अभी हमें एक प्रेयर रिक्वेस्ट ये मिली थी कि सिस्टर मार्गेट रोज की जो उनकी जो भाभी जो कत्ल हुई थी उनके भाई कह रहे हैं कि उनके भाई की कल पेशिया उन्होंने जाना है तो उसके लिए दुआ करें तो मैं जो है हमारे साथ भाई सदीक है वो सारी प्रेयर रिक्वेस्ट जो फरियाद के लिए और सायरा के लिए और भाई यूनिस के लिए जो पेशी के लिए वो जाएं उनके लिए दुआ करें और ये भाई सदीक उन सब के लिए और हमारी मिनिस्ट्री के लिए और इन सारे काम के लिए खुदा ने जब हमें चुना है तो खुदा हमें जो है वो जो है वो दलेरी और जरूरत और कुत भी दे और खुदा हम सब के आगे आगे चले उसकी कुदरत उसकी हशमत उसकी हैबत हमारे आगे आगे चले जी मेरी भी एक रिक्वेस्ट है जी भाई मारिया की रिक्वेस्ट सुनने पहले मेरा भांजा है वो इस्लामाबाद आईसीयू में है हॉस्पिटल में तो उसका लीवर ट्रांसप्लांट का कह रहे हैं छोटा सा है वो कोई ग्यारह बारह साल का तो उसके लिए दुआ करें तो और वैसे ही उसको शिफा दे दे क्योंकि वो बड़ा परेशान है सारे अच्छा चलें हम दुआ करेंगे भाई इनके भांजे को उनका नाम क्या है नाम है ताबील? जी ताबील इनके भांजे का नाम है उसके लिए दुआ करें उसका लिवर ट्रांसप्लांट का है तो वो दुआ करें कि वो खुदा उसको ऐसे ही शिफा दे और खुदा की जो पाक मर्जी है वो पूरी हो ये सूसी में बुजुर्ग आसमानी बाप हम आपका शुक्र आपकी तारीफ आपकी स्थाइश करते हैं यकीन भलाई और रहम और तरस से भरे हुए खुदाओं ने 
आप कहर करने में धीमे में और शफकत में गनी खुदा आवाज में सच्चे और कादर मुद्दे के आपके सारे वादी खान के साथ हैं आप इंसान के झूठ बोले और ना ही आप आदिम साथ के अपने वादा से फिर जाए बल्कि आप साथ कुल कौल है अब जो फरमाते हैं वो हो जाता है हमारे पा खुदा आपके कला में लिखा है तुम खुदा अपने खुदा की इबादत करो ता वो तेरे रोटी और पानी पर बर्क कर देगा और मैं तेरे बीच से बीमारी को दूर करूंगा तेरे मुल्क में ना किसके तो गवना को बांझ लेगी बल्कि मैं तेरी उम्र को पूरी करूंगा ये आपका वादा है मालिक हम आपके वादे को आप याद दिलाते हुए आपके जरिए में आते हैं मालिक पाप खुदा और फिर आपने कहा थके मांदे बोझ के दबे हुए लोगों मेरे पास हो मैं तुझे आराम दूंगा ये सूसी में आसमानी बाप हम आपकी सूरी में आया खुदा उन पा खुदा पर आपका वादा आपको याद दिलाते हैं मालिक जैसे आपने अपने बंदा यशवा से कहा खौफ न खाए हिम्मत कर मजबूत हो जा हौसला रख मैं तेरे साथ हूं जैसे मैं मूसा के साथ साथ आ वैसे ही तेरे साथ रहूंगा मैं कभी तुझसे दस्तबरदार ना हूँ मैं कभी तुझे अकेला ना छोड़ूंगा इसराइल के कद्दूस खुदा आज ये वादा पूरी बनी इंसान बनी इंसान के लिए मालिक पा खुदा तेरी कौम बनी इसराइल के लिए मालिक पा खुदा तेरे वादों को तेरी जूरी में खुदा तुझे याद दिलाते हुए मेहनत करते हैं तेरे वादों में सच्चा और कादर मुतल है खुदा आज तुमने अपने कलाम को नाजिल किया और आपने फरमाया कि मैं अपने कलाम को नाजिल फरमा कर छिपा देता हूँ यकीन आप अपने कलाम को नाजिल फरमाते और छिपा बखते मालिक इसलिए तेरा बंदा मरते दाऊद फरमाता है खा मौत की वादी के साया में से मेरा गुजर मार के किसी बला से ना डरूंगा क्योंकि मेरा यह हवा पाक खुदा मेरे साथ है और पाक खुदा यकीन आप हमारे साथ है जहां के भी हम जाते हैं आप हमारे साथ है हम आप हमारी आमदो रफ्त में हमारे साथ है आप हर जगह पर हमारे साथ है मालिक हॉस्पिटल के अंदर हमारे साथ है दुख में सुख में गम में मातम में खुशी में आप हमारे साथ है मालिक हम आपकी शुक्रगुजारी करते हैं जितनी दरखास्त आपके जरिए में रखी गई है मालिक उन सारी दरखास्तों को उठा करके तेरी शरीफ की धारा के नीचे लेकर आते हैं मालिक पा खुदा फरियाद की दरखास्त को मालिक तेरे जोरी में रखते हैं पाप खुदा नजीम की दरखास्त को खुदा तेरी जोरी में रखते हैं सायरा की दरखास्त को तेरी जोरी में रखते हैं मालिक और खुदा छोटे बच्चे को जिसका लीवर ट्रांस खुदा पा खुदा जिसके लीवर का मसला ये सुमसिन हाजरी के नाम है पा खुदा उसको भी आपके हाथ में देते हैं मालिक पा खुदा आप कुदरत रखते हैं कि खुदा उसका अपन नया लीवर दे बड़ी स्पिरिट पा खुदा इस मुसीब में स्वर्ग आसमानी बाप और भी जितने लोगों की दरखास्त है जिनके नाम खुदा मुझे याद नहीं है खुदा उनको भी आपके जोर में रखते हैं मालिक यीशु के नाम में खुदा एक एक दरखास्त पर बर्रे के लहू को मांगते हैं मालिक और खुदा मैं ये दरखास्त न रहे बल्कि खुदा तेरे लोग तेरी जूरी से जवाब मिलते जवाब के मुंतर है मालिक क्या आप अपने लोग की दुआओं का जवाब दिए बोली स्पिरट पाक खुदा पाक खुदा ये समुसी नास्त्री के सुरक नाम में हम आपकी शुक्रगुजारी करते हैं सारे वक्त के लिए जो आपने हमारी जिंदगी में दिया है मालिक पाक खुदा सारी मसरूफियात के लिए खुदा पाक खुदा जिसमें से वक्त निकाल कर हम आपकी जूरी में आते हैं मालिक मेहनत करते हैं वक्त है कि खुदा सारा वक्त आपके लिए हो मालिक पा खुदा और हम आपके वक्त में से दुनिया के लिए वक्त निकालें ना कि खुदा दुनिया के वक्त में से आपके लिए बुजुर्ग आसमानी बाप इन सारी दरखातों को भरे के लहू में डिप करते हैं मालिक और हमारा ईमान है कि जो कुछ हमने आपके जिन में रखा आपने हमारे लिए कर दिया है आपने हमें दे दिया है मालिक पा खुदा मेहनत करता हूँ सेंचुरली मिनिस्ट्री के लिए खुदा पाक खुदा तेरे जोर से बरकत की दुआ करते सलामती की दुआ करते खुदा इस सारी टीम को बड़ा मालिक पाक खुदा इस सारी टीम के साथ हो रहनमाई कर मदद कर मुआवजत कर खुदा पाक खुदा और खिदमत को बड़ा मालिक पाक खुदा कैनेडा में अमेरिका में खुदा मैक्सिको में जहां जहां से भी लोग खुदा तेरे साथ जुड़े हुए मालिक इंडिया से पाकिस्तान से नेपाल से फिलिपाइन से खुदा जहां जहां से भी 
तेरे लोग खुदा तेरी खिदमत में सरगर्म है उन सब के लिए आपकी बरकत चाहता हूँ आपकी सलामती चाहता हूँ उनके कंट्रीज के लिए आपकी बरकत को मांगता हूँ मालिक ताकि इसी तरह तेरे लोग पूरे वर्ल्ड में जुड़े रहे और खुदा तेरे बेटे यश मुसी को जलाल देने का समाप्त ठहरे हम कम होते जाए आप बढ़ते जाए खुदा और हमेशा हमारी जिंदगी से जलाल आपके नाम को मिले छूना इन सारी दरखास्त को और बरकत देना मुस्सी का नाम लेकर मांगते हैं अमीन 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 अब हम खुदा की सिखाई हुई दुआ में शरीक होंगे ऐ हमारे बाप तू जो आसमान पर है तेरा नाम पाक माना जाए तेरी बात सही आए तेरी मर्जी जैसे आसमान पर पूरी होती है जमीन पर भी हो हमारे रोज की रोटी आज हमें दे और जिस हम अपने कर्जदारों को माफ करते हैं तू भी हमारे कर्ज हमें माफ कर और हमें आजमाइश न पड़ने दे बल्कि मैं बुरा इस बच्चा के बाद शहद कुदो तो जलाल हमेशा से तेरे ही है आमीन आमीन जी कलाम में बरकत अदा करें भाई भाई फ्याजा जी जी भाई जो आप बो भाई फ्याजा पता कर दें आप हमारे खुदा सुमसी का फजल की मोहब्बत पाक रू की इफाकत और शाकत तमाम कलीसियों के साथ तमाम कसिन के साथ बिलखसूस हाजर जमात के साथ और इस मिनिस्ट्री के साथ जिस प्लेटफॉर्म से हम खुदा बात कर रहे हैं अब्दुल बाद और हमेशा हमेशा होती रहे आमीन 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 खुदा आपको बरकत दे आमीन खुदा आपके साथ हो आमीन फजल इसके मैं इस पेश